Greetings baseball fans and baseball card collectors. In this video, I want to talk through one of the little remembered aspects of the Pete Rose banishment and the situation that he finds himself in today, particularly with regard to the Hall of Fame. I call this the Pete Rose Rule, or how Bud Selig and the Hall of Fame stuck it to Charlie Hustle. Now before I get started, I should say that I've been a Pete Rose fan for a long time. He was one of my favorite players growing up, along with uh, Mike Schmidt and Dave Parker, probably a couple of others. Um, however, it's, it's clear that he bet on the game and he probably did more things in that regard than even he has admitted to. And it's uh, fair that he's on the outside looking in, in terms of how the game goes. Um, but there's more to the story. So if we roll the clock back to August 24th of 1989, you probably remember that um, things had been kind of stacking up against Rose. The evidence was mounting. Uh, Bart Giamatti, who was the commissioner at the time, was kind of zeroing in on uh, Pete to figure out, you know, what the extent of his betting activity was, and pretty much came down to he had bet at least on baseball probably on his team who knows if he bet against his team Ugh, i shudder to think but could have happened anyway it was bad enough and rose was in enough of a corner as the cincinnati inquirer here says that he accepted a lifetime suspension with the caveat that he could apply for reinstatement at some point so this was august 24th of 1989 that Rose applied or that Rose uh, accepted the suspension. So he had retired as a player in 1986, which means that after the, the uh, 1991 season, rolling into 1992, he would have been eligible to appear on the writer's ballot for the Hall of Fame for the first time. However, on February 4th of 1991, the Hall of Fame board. Um, examined a recommendation from a special committee um, that they convened like a month earlier which decided that any player who was ineligible to be part of baseball proper would now be ineligible to be elected to the Hall of Fame. Prior to 1991, i.e. when Rose accepted his deal, this was not the case. The, the two are technically uh, not tied together they're not the same entity major league baseball and the hall of fame they're obviously closely related but they one does not dictate the other so baseball made its decision with regard to rose and rose accepted it um, however the hall of fame piece was not on the table um, so it was kind of like they closed the door after he had already agreed to the deal um, and so you can see some of the um, pieces here. And the reason I call out Selig is that he was not commissioner at that point, obviously. So Bart Giamatti had passed away. Faye Vincent had taken over. But Selig was the Milwaukee Brewers owner. And he just happened to be on um, the Hall of Fame uh, board, board of directors. And so he was part of this decision. He voted uh, to, uh, for this resolution that was passed by the board and essentially closed the doors to Pete Rose and, and others who might be on the um, ineligible list. So there was really no way that Seeley would have reinstated Rose, you know, later on, I don't think, given that he was part of this committee. Um, he was a master at saving face while he was in office, that is for sure. So if we move on, um, so as I said, before this point, people who were ineligible, players who were ineligible in baseball's eyes were still eligible for the Hall of Fame, technically. And as a case in point, Joe Jackson actually received some votes in the 1936 um, Hall of Fame election and received nominating votes in uh, 1946. So there was not... It, it wasn't without pres precedence that Rose could have received votes, could have been elected to the Hall of Fame. So when, uh, of course, 
like I said, Seeley wasn't likely to reinstate Rose, and of course he didn't. When Seeley finally retired and Rob Manfred came to office, um, Rose immediately applied for reinstatement to baseball proper. Manfred said, no, your, your crimes against the game were too egregious. You haven't really shown any uh, rehabilitation or contrition, which I agree with. Um, I think he should still be out. But Manfred said in this quote, as part of his statement, in fact, in my view, the considerations that should drive a decision on whether an individual should be allowed to work in baseball are not the same as those that should drive a decision on Hall of Fame eligibility. So here Manfred seems to be arguing for splitting uh, those two pieces apart again, saying, in effect, if you're ineligible for working in baseball, being part of baseball, I don't necessarily think that should uh, exclude you from Hall of Fame consideration. And there have been, I think, Rose's uh, lawyer has made the same argument over the years. Um, there have been some writers who are pretty adamant that they want the chance to say yay or nay to Rose on a ballot, uh, but it hasn't happened. And so that's kind of the, the point where we're at. I think this is a point that's lost a lot of times in the Pete Rose Hall of Fame debate. So should he be out of baseball is really, in my mind, a separate question from should he be in the Hall of Fame or should he be considered for the Hall of Fame? So my question to you is, should Pete Rose be eligible for a Hall of Fame vote? Should the baseball writers or the Veterans Committee or whoever have a chance to look at Rose for the Hall of Fame, leaving him out of any discussion around coming back to the game itself? Let me know in the comments and hopefully we can have some discussion around this. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like this video and tell your friends about the Pete Rose rule if you didn't already know about it. And if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel now so you don't miss future videos like this one. And you can find us online at waxpackgods.com.